There are things in life that are unavoidable. The most famous, of course, are death and taxes. But not far behind them is Snowtracks viewers wanting a shootout. You love them and we listen. Each season we try to bring you a shootout between a couple of the most talked about models in the industry. Our shootouts are always honest and in turn always spark some kind of controversy, which as far as I'm concerned, is awesome. And this brings me to the first shootout story of the 2021 season. The two sleds we'll be talking about today are Skidoo's 2021 Summit Expert 165-850 Turbo, and I bet you can guess what the second one is. Polaris's Pro RMK. It has, for a number of seasons, outclassed its competition in the mountain segment by being the most precise and easiest to ride mountain sled on the snow. This statement alone is already furrowing some eyebrows, I'm sure, but I want to apologize for the opinions we at Snow Tracks have developed during our unbiased testing. And it is unbiased. I have said this literally hundreds of times over the years, and I'm gonna say it one more time right now. I do not care who makes the best snowmobile. No one pays us for our opinions because they are not for sale. We are forever searching for the best riding experience a person can have on the snow, and we'll pick whatever sled makes that possible as our favorite. It's as simple as that. For 2021, Polaris is giving riders the best Pro RMK ever. It's lighter, more responsive, and more precise than last season. And this is due to two very important updates. First is the new Quick Drive 2 belt drive system. The previous Quick Drive setup was definitely lighter than a chain case and offered more instantaneous response, but the belt itself was not as durable as some harder core mountain riders required. Quick Drive 2 features an all new belt that Polaris says is more than capable of handling a 174 by 3 inch paddle and then some. This means that 3 inch riders can finally take advantage of all the benefits of a belt drive system. Interestingly enough though, the Pro RMK we're testing here isn't a 3 inch. This is because of update number 2, which is Polaris's new Series 8 track. The main difference between the Series 7 and 8 tracks is the pitch. The Series 7 track was a 3-inch pitch, whereas the Series 8 is a 3.5-inch pitch. The mathematics surrounding this change result in a track length of 165, but instead of just slapping a 3-inch paddle on this new track, Polaris went a step further and developed a new 2.75 lug, which they say is the best all-round lug in the business. The claim is that the 3.5-inch pitch track with a 2.7 lug builds track speed faster than the 3-inch pitch track with a 3-inch lug. The lug is a dual compound design that's stiffer on the bottom for traction, but softer on top for better lift. My opinion after riding it, it's every bit as good, maybe even better than the old Series 7 3-inch track. Even more impressive is that the new Series 8 track, despite being a 165, is actually lighter than Polaris's 163 with a 2.6 paddle, and obviously much lighter than the Series 7 3-inch, so you're getting more length for less weight. In 2020, the Polaris Pro RMK was our favorite mountain sled. It simply outclassed the 2020 Summit. But for 2021, the Summit Turbo gets more changes than just the turbo setup. It also gets the new one-piece lightweight hood and all the extra goodies that come with the expert package, like the shorter tunnel, short seat, adjustable limiter strap, revised front suspension, and revised cockpit. To say the turbo setup on the 2020 Summit is genius would be an understatement. Its dual intake system that separates turbocharged intake from naturally aspirated intake is what makes this sled feel just as snappy at lower elevations as a non-turbo, but maintain its horsepower as elevations rise. This system is so seamless it's basically invisible while you're riding, which is exactly what good technology should be. Two-stroke turbo technology in general has come a long way in the past eight to 10 years, but the Skidoo 850 Turbo is the most seamless system ever produced, period. As I sat down to try and organize this shootout, it became apparent that the best way was to talk about each sled highs and lows individually and finish with an overview of our findings and justifications for the final verdict. I'm gonna start with the Polaris simply because P comes before S in the alphabet. It was actually Skidoo who started the weight wars back in the early 2000s when they released the original Rev platform. At that time, weight was everything. Anyone who spent time around power sports will undoubtedly have heard the saying, light is right. And the truth is, light is right. 
There are no instances where a heavier sled is better, and there's no place where lightweight is more important than in the mountains. Polaris has made the light is right philosophy a cornerstone of pro RMK development since day one, and the results are clear. But lightweight isn't the only thing that matters. The rest of the sled has to work as well, and the pro RMK definitely works in deep snow. The power of the Patriot 850 engine combined with the instantaneous response of the Quick Drive 2 system and the incredible lift and traction of that Series 8 2.75 paddle track result in a sled that almost jumps out of the snow. Low end grunt is where the Patriot 850 really shines, but it's not just the torque, it's how smooth the power delivery is. In tight situations where smooth and precise throttle response is absolutely mandatory, you won't find anything smoother than a Pro RMK. Likewise, the chassis and suspension is darn near perfect. Polaris has managed to build a sled that can be pulled on its side and held there with little to no effort, all without using any kind of trickery like a narrow or pivoting skid frame. In talking with countless pro riders from all brands, the one thing they all praise about the Pro RMK is how predictable it is. No matter what situation you're in, the sled will always do exactly what you tell it to. This is thanks in part to an extremely stiff chassis. Instead of flexing under load from either a rider or the engine, it simply transfers whatever energy is being expended upon it into movement. Some might argue that the stiff chassis makes it feel somewhat unforgiving, and this may be a slight drawback, but it's definitely one that's worth the trade-off. Ergonomically speaking, every Snowtracks TV test rider who's ever swung a leg over a Pro RMK has come away saying that they felt like it fit them perfectly. I have yet to hear a single person say that they didn't feel comfortable on a Pro, certainly not me. Now it's time to get down and dirty with Skidoo's 2021 Summit Expert 165 850 Turbo, quite possibly the most talked about new sled we've seen in a decade. Skidoo's mandate with the Summit Turbo was pretty clear. Build the industry's first production two-stroke turbo without sacrificing low altitude power and without traditional turbo drawbacks like lag or abrupt power spikes. Basically, make it seamless. And boy, did they succeed. Rotax's 850 Turbo offers seamless transition from non-turbo to turbocharged power. So seamless, in fact, that you won't even know it's happening. The base platform of this sled is identical to last season's Summit Expert. Besides the turbo, the only difference is the lightweight hood, but this is certainly not a bad thing. The Summit Expert platform is incredible. Summit ergonomics are something our entire crew agrees with. They feel weird at first being that far forward, but once given time to acclimate to the sled, it becomes a non-issue, and they actually have some serious benefits in certain scenarios. When it was first released, T-Motion certainly got the industry talking. The promise of effortless maneuverability was not a letdown at all. Besides an Alpha 1, a T-Motion equipped Summit is the second easiest sled to get on its side. But because it has very limited flex, it doesn't wash out on side hills nearly as much as an Alpha 1 does. In terms of power, clearly this is where the Summit Turbo is in a class of its own. Obviously, the turbo compensates for horsepower loss due to thinner air as altitudes climb. Unlike at sea level, where a turbo is designed to increase horsepower, the turbo setup on the Summit is designed to maintain horsepower, and it does it extremely well. The Summit Expert package includes a bunch of things that may or may not be of value to you. Things like the tiny seat or adjustable limiter strap. Nice to have, yeah, but maybe not 100% necessary. What you will appreciate in a big way, though, is the shorter tunnel. Pro riders have been doing this for a few years, running a 155 tunnel with a 165 skid, among other combinations. This setup comes with a few benefits. First, the sled is able to lift its nose way easier without catching the rear of the tunnel in the snow. Great for wheelies, but also great when you need to get the nose up for any reason. Second, it allows for better snow clearing through the back of the sled, which actually helps you from getting stuck in trenching scenarios. The third benefit is pretty obvious. It's lighter weight, which is always good. Okay, so now we understand the high points of both of these sleds, what makes them different and what has impressed us, which means it's now time to talk about how they compare to each other. The first thing I wanna talk about is weight. Polaris's Pro RMK 165 with Quick Drive 2 in the Series 8 track tips the scales at just 415 pounds. Now, when you consider that only a decade ago, Skidoo was boasting about how they had a trail sled that weighed 399 pounds, a 415 pound, 850cc, 165 long mountain sled becomes even more impressive. 
Polaris' measured dry weights show that the difference in weight between an RMK163 3 inch with a standard chain case and the new RMK165 2.75 with quick drive 2 in the Series 8 track is just over 13 pounds. People have been known to spend thousands to save 5 pounds, let alone 13. Now contrast this with Skidoo's turbo. The number that gets thrown around a lot is 30 pounds. That's how much the turbo increases the overall weight of the Summit 850, which ends up at 468 pounds. But keep in mind, the non-turbo Summit was already heavier than the Pro RMK. So as far as we can tell, the actual difference in weight between both of these sleds is right at 50 pounds. That's not a small number. Of course, the argument is that the Summit makes more horsepower, so that'll make up for the extra weight. But this argument needs to be put into perspective because it's not that simple. Here's some math to consider. First, the Summit Turbo actually makes slightly less horsepower at sea level than the non-turbo Summit 850. 165 is the claim. This is also less than Polaris's 850 Patriot, so the Skidoo is starting at a deficit. After talking to a number of engine builders and engineers, I have found that the horsepower to weight compensation calculation is somewhere between three pounds and eight pounds per horsepower. So let's just call it five pounds to be fair. This means that at sea level, the actual horsepower numbers look more like this. The Skidoo 850 Turbo at 155 and the Polaris 850 Patriot at 168. That's the conservative estimate for the Polaris. Now here's another number, 3%. That's the generally accepted percentage of horsepower lost for every 1,000 feet of elevation gained. This means that if the Polaris makes 168 horsepower, it will be losing approximately five horsepower per every 1,000 feet of elevation gained. But this doesn't start to take effect until approximately 2,000 feet, which means until you reach 5,000 feet, the turbo on the Skidoo hasn't managed to compensate for the extra weight of the entire sled. After 5,000 feet is where the horsepower to weight calculation becomes moot and the Skidoo finally starts to push ahead of the Polaris. Consider this though, the vast majority of mountain riders rarely get above 7,000 feet. But there's more to this scenario because while the weight and horsepower numbers are important when talking about performance, weight will always be exactly what it is when talking about effort. A 50 pound heavier sled stuck at 1,000 feet is still 50 pounds heavier when it's stuck at 8,000 feet, and vice versa. A sled that only weighs 415 pounds at 1,000 feet still only weighs 415 pounds when it's stuck at 7 or 8,000 feet. This is a lot of talk about horsepower and weight, but the reality is these are the two biggest factors differentiating these two sleds. If they were both the same weight and had the same horsepower, picking a winner would be about nothing more than personal preference. When you bring in these horsepower and weight numbers though, the decision becomes more scientific than that. Is weight more important than horsepower or vice versa? This all comes down to feel. More often than not, a lighter vehicle will feel like it has more horsepower than a heavier one. It'll be snappier and more responsive, even if it has a horsepower deficit. This is why so many autocross drivers love the Mazda Miata. It boasts horrible horsepower numbers, but it's so light that it actually feels better than heavier cars with way more power. And this is exactly how we feel about the two sleds we're talking about today. If the Skidoo made, say, 200 horsepower at sea level and then maintained that all the way up to 8,000 feet, this might be a different conversation. But as it sits, all of the thinkers in our crew and all of the riders in our crew agree. Both of these sleds are impressive in so many similar ways. They're both shockingly capable in the deepest snow at the highest altitudes. But for all of us here, the fact still remains. Light is, as it always has been, right, which leads us to one final conclusion. Polaris's 2021 Pro RMK 165 with Quick Drive 2 is the winner here. But that's not to say that the Skidoo isn't a great sled or that the turbo system isn't impressive. Not by a long shot, it absolutely is. But if we had to pick a sled to climb a mountain in deep snow, it will always be the one that's 50 pounds lighter. If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.